Well, welcome back to another coffee and a chat. Um, so those of you that are keeping track of things that are going on, it, some of you know we are expecting puppies. They're supposed to come in the next four days. Uh, yeah, they might be coming sooner than later. Our girl is seeming to get all ready and she is nesting quite nicely today and all the all the things are getting in line to suggest that there will soon be puppies. So yeah, it's nursery central, central, nursery central around here and we're very excited to meet our new babies. So I don't know, you know, birthing babies, whether it's dogs or people or cats or whatever, they just kind of tend to come <laughs> when they're ready to come. So even though everything seems to be lining up nicely and that we're getting to that place and soon we'll have them, um, it may, it could still be a couple of days. I know how that goes, but I don't think she's going to make it the full four days. I think she'll have them probably in the next two days. So just a little puppy update for any of you that are keeping track of that. Also, if you saw my short, you know that, yes, I've got these letters right here. With, and I'm showing you the backs of the envelopes to keep people's privacy. But I got a couple of letters. My first letters when I went to check the mail this week. And so very excited about that. I'm um, gonna have some, some videos as a result of that. Uh, Cassie is asking for um, some shorts showing some of my raised beds and you know, and some of the stuff with my gardening. And uh, I'm gonna be answering these letters, gals. I will be sending you letters, but Cassie, I, I almost went out and just did it the other day, but you know, everything looks really barren and bleak right now, coming out of winter. And I have in one of the beds, I do have um, some potatoes that I'm growing in a cardboard box and there'll be some more that will go in there. But I think I'm gonna push that a little bit closer, you know, into summer. I had already um, planned to uh, uh, hopefully do some of, uh, some of my coffee in a chats from my garden this summer and or from the greenhouse or whatever just to kind of you know take you on a, a little location and and share with you some of the the goodness of what God's doing in um in the garden so and that's one of my most favorite places to be so I will do um some videos that will just kind of show what we've done and because uh, Marvin and I, we keep it pretty simple and we try to work with what we have and not go into, you know, big fancy, you know, got to look a certain way. I mean, I have lived that life. I have already been that person and uh, would go out there and maybe spend a lot of money, just get these things built or done, whatever. And that's just not who I am anymore. That's not where God has led me. Now, Marvin and I both um, are really that we need to work with what God's already provided. And so that's what we've done. We've got some interesting things that we've done to create some raised beds. And some of them are quite raised because at my age, it helps to bring the garden up to, <laughs> to me rather than me trying to go down to where the garden is, if you know what I mean. So... Um, yeah, so we'll be doing some of that. She also was interested in some of the things that I do with my my own herbal medicines and stuff. And, you know, I am not, that's not, this channel is not about, you know, teaching that kind of stuff necessarily. Um, but those are part of who I am and God has taught me a lot through them. And so I will share some things with you, not to like teach you, here's what you need to do or whatever. Uh, but just show you some of the things that God showed me and what my feeling is. I mean, that's when it comes to health care and stuff. I'm very much you do you, I'll do me. Um, I believe that we should all have the right to follow our own uh, path or course that we've chosen for our health. And I don't want somebody else telling me, you know, that I have to do this or I have to do that. I I appreciate and believe I should have a right to the freedom to make my own choices. So I do have some concepts, some things that for me personally, that work for me and what I've kind of come to believe. And it, and it definitely is 
tied into my spiritual life, my walk with Christ is very much a part of my practices and what I believe. So I will happily share with you guys some of those things um, here in the, the next few months as weather gets more uh, conducive to that. I might do something with the, with the um, herbs before then because I'm already out foraging. I, I pretty much forage year round. There's different things available different times of the year and, and whatnot. So those are things that, that will be coming up in videos later um, this you know, coming into summer and some of them in summer. And I will happily share with you some of the things that God has done in my life in those areas and where he's brought me to. Because I haven't always been this way. I'm oh, I, Maybe to some degree with the natural medicine stuff, I probably, yeah, I have been for a long time. And according to my mother, I ever since I was a kid, I had a, a tendency to be that way also have Native American in my in my heritage and my grandmother who was a Choctaw Indian. Her grandmother had taught her different things and she had different feelings on stuff and, and I think that definitely had an influence uh, into my life as to just doing things on a more just natural level. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So, and there, I think um, my the other letter letter that I received uh, is going to have some Ask Angie videos because there's some some really good questions in there and some things I would really like to answer and address. And then I've gotten some other things um, through email and stuff that I yeah I see some more Ask Angie videos coming up, and I'll just kind of give you my feeling on some of these questions that have come up and. Actually, in a way, the the raised beds and the herbs is they, those actually fit with an Ask Angie too because they're my they're my personal opinion and how I feel about things. But today, I wanted to do something a, a little bit uh, different with what I'm going to share with you. I uh, was cleaning out some papers, you know, when I was doing my taxes, and I'm looking for every receipt that I maybe had misplaced and trying to get as much stuff together. And so I came across some things uh, that I'd forgot about or that needed to be filed or put in a notebook or whatever and hadn't got there yet. And so one of the things I found is this piece of paper with a bunch of writing on it. And it is from um, some time I was spending alone with the Lord. And it's uh, some journaling I did. I think I'm a frustrated writer. I do. And uh, I have done some writing in my life, but nothing like, like I really would have liked to have done. Now I make YouTube videos and actually that works even better. Uh, I think when you can, when, when you read something that somebody wrote or if they're talking to you, when they're talking to you, you get so much more because you can hear the inflections in their voice and, and you see their personality come through and all. So I am going to read this to you, but it's it's just a, a thing that I had written as God was dealing with my heart about some things. And this kind of this picture came to me and I wrote it down that really helped me personally understand the importance of not giving in to sin, kind of maybe seeing it from a little bit different angle, not so much just the, hey, psh, I'm not hurting anybody but myself kind of thing. No, it put it in a whole nother perspe perspective for me. I am so tongue-tied today. I don't know what's going on. Probably lack of sleep because I had a very whiny dog keeping me up all night. <laughs> Hopefully she does have these puppies soon because I'm exhausted. So anyway, I just want to kind of share this with you. And so here's here's what this said. It blessed me when I found it and read through it again. And and yeah, and it, it really made me think. So I'm hoping that it does something for you too. Imagine you have an enemy who hates you so much that their total focus day and night is to find a way to remove you so that they can uh, assume your position in life. They constantly work against you, focusing on destroying everything you do. Then they see you one day. You're playing with your children, 
They watch you delighting yourself and your children, smiling, laughing, kissing, and hugging them. And your enemy reali realizes that the key to destroying you is to take what you love most from you, your children. So your enemy shows false kindness and friendship to your children as he slowly takes their affection from you. He offers them gifts that look so wonderful, but in truth, they are a poison designed to destroy, even kill your children. Your children think your enemy truly cares about them. They don't see that they're simply pawns that the enemy is using in an attempt to destroy you. But you, you see what's happening. So is there anything that you would not do in order to save your children? Well, today I see God sitting on his throne. I see his enemy, the devil, evil, darkness, jealous of him. His enemy desires to knock God off the throne and take God's position. But the enemy can't do it. So then the enemy sees God's love for his children, you and me. And he says, they're the key. So the enemy works to entice you and to entice me away from our heavenly father through things that look good to us, but their end is death. The enemy tries to use us to hurt our father who sits on the throne. So please, father, Help me to remember the next time that I'm tempted by the flesh that it is a strategic move to use me to hurt you. I love you, Father. I do not want to be an instrument in the hand of the enemy to be used against you. Just kind of a little different way of looking at it. And it really spoke to my heart. It speaks to my heart again every time I read it. It helps me see a picture that these things of the flesh that come and entice me and tempt me, it's really designed to destroy me in order to hurt my Heavenly Father. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to do anything that would hurt my Heavenly Father. So maybe this will just kind of speak to you in a little way today, too, to think about it. Because you know what? I don't think a day goes by that there's not some kind of temptation that easily comes along to ensnare us. And maybe this will help both of us think twice the next time something like that happens to make the right choice, to choose, to choose Jesus and not our flesh. All right. I love you guys. Ah. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. And the, the ladies that sent me the letters, thank you so much um, for, for the letters. Um, there was even a gift in one of them. And I thank you for that. And it humbles me, but it also excites me. You sh I mean, Marvin was, I came out of the post office jumping up and down and dancing around <laughs> because I had mail. Uh, I was even kind of amazed at how happy it made me. But then just that, you know, to have you guys share your hearts with me and what God's doing in your life, and, and some of your struggles and trials, oh, it just moves in me. And I'll tell you, both these women went into my prayer journal for 40 days that I'll be praying for them very specifically. And um, But even in general, I pray for all of you every day that the Lord will bless you, that he will guide you and lead you and draw you closer to himself. So you guys have a very blessed day today, and I'm going to be talking to you again real soon.